Hi everybody, so harmonic drives or strain wave drives as they're also known were developed in the 1950s by C.W. Musa. They were initially developed for aerospace applications but over time they've found use in a whole range of fields including robotics, medical equipment and various precision machinery. It can be said that Musa's innovation revolutionised gear mechanisms, offering a compact alternative to traditional gear mechanisms. Harmonic drives operate on a unique principle of flexible components that exploit the elasticity of materials to achieve precision motion. Comprising three primary elements, the wave generator, flex spline, and circular spline, these devices offer high reduction ratios and exceptional torque-to-weight ratios. The wave generator causes the flex spline to flex, which engages with the circular spline, resulting in controlled motion. The wave generator, typically an elliptical mechanism, produces a wave-like motion that propagates along the flex spline. This motion deforms the flex spline, causing it to engage with and move the circular spline. The harmonic motion of the flex spline, induced by the wave generator, creates a controlled rotation enabling precise speed and torque transfer. Of course they have their advantages and they come mostly in precision and accuracy, compactness, high torque density, zero backlash and reliability. They're very reliable devices. Harmonic drives are crucial components in industries where precision, compactness and high torque transmission are paramount. They play a pivotal role in robotic arms telescope positioning systems, aerospace equipment, and various automated machinery. Their ability to deliver precise, smooth motion in compact spaces has made them indispensable in advanced technological applications. Of course, they have their disadvantages too. They're relatively complex to manufacture, and there's a limit to the range of angular movement that they can have, and they do have lower efficiency. And because, of course, that spline is being flexed all of the time, it has a tendency to crack. To overcome some of those difficulties, this was developed. It's called the split ring harmonic drive. <laughs> I think it's absolutely awesome. In fact, so I've drawn this up in Tinkercad and of course I will be putting these files on Thingiverse should anybody want to use them, but it basically consists of a top plate, a bottom plate, three planetary gears and a drive gear. Now this is 18 teeth, these are 21 teeth, but what's interesting is the difference between these two. This is 57 teeth and this is 60 teeth and it's three teeth difference because one of these teeth of each of those engages with each side of the disc. So of course the central drive goes through and I've put two bearings in there. They're skater bearings, so they're 22 mil by eight mil by seven mil thick. Pop those in there and the planetary gears go in as you would expect any planetary gear to go in at 120 degrees apart like that. Now, these teeth are a different modulus because as already squeeze 57 teeth directly onto 60 teeth, you can do it if you change the modulus of the tooth. So the modulus, remember, reflects the size of the tooth. Normally, you can only do modulus to modulus to get the gears to engage, but there's such a slight difference in the modulus. This is modulus two, and this is modulus 1.98, that actually this will squeeze onto that really rather nicely and both of the gears engage but there's a really interesting effect that if we hold this flanged plate here as the base plate and return the drive sun then it will turn the planets but at a 200 to 1 ratio so this which is now the drive gear turns incredibly slowly and with a huge amount of torque and of course although my pancake version here is actually quite large so we can demonstrate straight this can be incredibly thin it's really rather awesome and very difficult to stop that turning <laughs> so other names for this are the uh, split ring epicyclic gear the split ring compound gear the split ring planetary gear there seems to be a whole load of names and it was first looked at during the war you can get away with it because really at any one time only one tooth is engaging but it is 
surprisingly powerful and really quite easy to print and it works well as a 3D print so it's in that range of all those huge gear reductions now it isn't really 200 to 1 hey I was joking it was just a figure from the air but it is a, a massive gear reduction that we get there and you might have noticed that I use a couple of bits of animation in the video that's because I'm always looking for things to improve the video and if you like the animation let me know if you hated it let me know because if you hated it I won't do it again if you like it I'll do it again. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you find these files useful and the gear system useful. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.